um, this is another episode of um, of me creating a virtual setup in Maestro 3D and here we have a quite a simple case um, the patient uh, wants us to fix uh, um, his uh, frontal teeth position um, the crowding and here we see that the canine are in the relationships uh, in class 2 relationships and um, what happens if we make the class 1 so we we see that we have too much space in the frontal area which cannot be closed orthodontically by just moving the teeth uh, to that um, positions uh, for sure we can distribute the incisors um, and to put the veneers on the, uh, all, all the teeth but I think it's not the best way and um, let's try to find uh, the simplest solution and um, I would consider some um, palatal expansion here maybe surgically assisted but the patient that, um, wants us to um, to make the simplest plan as possible so uh, I'll start with uh, some expansion uh, in order to obtain some space in the uh, frontal area of the dental arches so we are proclining all the teeth forward and um, at the stage of preparation of the models my technician always sets the center of rotation in the middle of the root because this is how aligners actually work so they uh, they don't move the teeth uh, um, bodily so we're limited in uh, translational movements um, so that we use dipping instead of translation in almost all the cases there are some exceptions of course when we can achieve almost translational movements for instance uh, distillation with good anchorage retraction combined with uh, power ridges and intrusion okay we've done with the lower jaw and um, now we need to do the same to the upper some minor expansion and let's check the occlusal contacts yep we have no no collisions let's add some overcorrection and um, here when I'm looking at the numbers uh, I always check uh, that rotation uh, goes in combination with the uh, proclination with the uh, torque movement otherwise uh, it doesn't work as uh, predicted so I, if I see that the rotation e, um, goes uh, faster than the proclining so I reduce the rotation or I increase the torque Well, I think we're done with the layer one. Now let's create uh, the second layer. 
and retract the upper teeth. Here in this case I don't want to lose the torque so I'll move the teeth with the translational movement but uh, to let it happen I need to combine it with intrusion or to add the power ridges. In this case I will add the intrusion maybe for this one I would make more tipping to make the incisal edges more even and here I see some imperfections in the vertical positions of the teeth I don't like to extrude the teeth uh, with the liners uh, except using the, some um, buttons and elastics so it's much easier to intrude the teeth rather than to extrude so we'll adjust uh, the incisors by intruding a few of them and now let's adjust the lower uh, teeth set them into a straight position avoiding the collisions with the upper teeth some uh, some minor sagittal gap is, uh, is, is, is okay let's adjust the vertical positions uh, by adding some intrusion as well Okay. Maybe we should intrude the canines, but it it's a very complicated movement for clear liners, so I would better consider um some grinding of the incisal edges of the canines because they are too big. This is what I usually do. Okay, so here I see some intersection uh, and it still persists. We can uh, visualize it. Uh huh. So we don't see any collisions, but there is one on the left canine. Mm -hmm. what can we do mm -hmm. uh, we should not reduce the width between the canines um, but here I think we still have some uh -huh. some space I would consider grinding this incisal edge as well mm -hmm. now I think we we are done with this collision but uh, now we can see that um, the canine is placed more lingually let's try to improve this by moving the other uh, teeth distribute the IPR, distribute the space we got to make the I IPR more uh, even between all the surfaces I think we can reduce the sagittal gap by placing the incisors 
more palatally. I'm not sure that uh, we will be successful with this rotation because it's quite big um, for such a small uh, crown but let's try maybe we'll put some attachments to have this rotation to happen okay some torque improvements and I'm checking the difference between the final and the initial positions to implement some overcorrection so uh, I see that this incisor was a bit forward so I need to put it a bit uh, backwards and same for the rest of the teeth I always set some overcorrection for all the cases well Okay, let's check the overcorrection on the lower incisors and the canines. So we had this uh, central incisor a bit forward, we should put it a bit more lingually. Okay. Let's compare the initial position and the final result. Mm -hmm. I think after grinding the upper canines, it, it should look much better. Okay. Uh, the veneers on the frontal teeth is also a good option here. Well, let's go to the um, attachments placement. Let's put the numbers in order not to mix the models after the 3D printing. And um, since we did some intrusion for all the incisors, we need to put at least four attachments for uh, retention. I use this shape. Put them in the same line. And I think we can do the same for the lower arch as well I'm not going to put uh, attachments on the molars because I think the retention should be good uh, the crowns are not that small and we will cut the liner about the gingival zenith um, like two three millimeters this also helps to have a good retention okay and now let's uh, set the, those attachments for all the layers and now let's check yep we see the same attachments at the layer 1 and layer 2 
and let's see do we need some other attachments here we rotate the canine for five degrees so we should probably put the attachment here uh, because the canines they always require the attachments to rotate so let's add those attachments I'm used to use this kind of shape the triangular mm -hmm. here we see the mesial rotation so we put it to the mesial part here is the same If I would see the um, minus here, it uh, it's going to be a distal rotation. But here we see that um, it's a mesial rotation. So we put the attachments to the mesial part of the crown. Uh huh. Not forget to set those attachments for all the layers. And I think we should help this rotation for the teeth, um, for the um, lateral incisor on the uh, left side. First of all, let's check. Is it uh, combined with the um, torque? Yes, it is. But let's rotate it and recline it more at the layer one. I prefer to uh, put the most difficult movements at the very first uh, aligners because we have, have the best fit between the liner and the teeth uh, and let's add some negative attachment this shape this size it turns red and layer 2 we put the attachment of the mesial part. Do we need those attachments on the layer one? I think here it might it might happen. Uh, it might help. Okay. If we will need some additional overcorrection. Uh, when the patient is done with the initial set of uh, trays we can just go back to this virtual setup create a new layer add some our correction blah 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 and uh, print one or two more aligners now let's check how many models do we need to print I start with the lower jaw Here I would put six or seven maybe let's let's choose six and five at the layer two. Okay. And for the upper arch, I would be slower, making um, uh, nine models for the layer one. And let it be seven or even let it be eight models or even nine models for layer two because I'm I don't want to be fast with uh, uh, an intrusion and uh, tipping the canines distally uh, uh, orally shouldn't be too quick as well so 18 aligners in total uh, for the upper jaw and 11 for the lower let's see the animation how it looks okay 
expansion, proclining, and retracting the frontal teeth. Very simple case. But we have uh, many cases uh, like this one. The same cases for aligners. Aligners are uh, good uh, for these cases, they are quick. You can uh, fix such cases in a very short terms. Uh -huh, here I see some something I want to fix now. I did not move the first premolar here, but I moved its uh, antagonist so that we will get the immediate relapse uh, if we don't adjust the upper and lower teeth so let's go back to the setup and add some more tipping so at layer 1 don't need much mm -hmm. I think it looks better now and here we should uh, reset the tooth position from layer 2 to make it look like uh, layer 1 and um, the software asks us to recalculate the quantity of models so we keep the same numbers And now we're satisfied with the final result, with the quantity of aligners, um, and we can export the project to show it to the patient and to the doctor.